How did one of the most profitable mobile games go from making 100 million per year to going bankrupt? Once a titan in the mobile gaming world, Rovio's reign came crashing down as they fell victim to their success. Instead of continuing to innovate and please fans with their Angry Birds franchise, they fell to immoral practices and lost touch with their audience. The result? A wave of disappointment amongst once loyal fans and company lawsuits. Angry Birds was more than just a mobile game. It was an empire. It was predicted to be a global brand, just like Pokemon. The story started in 2003, when three students, Kim Dykert, Nicholas Head, and Jano Vachavainen from the University of Helsinki, entered a mobile game development contest. Surprisingly, they won and later sold the game King of the Cabbage World. That's when they decided to go all in on a mobile game company called Reload. After a year in operation, they changed the name to Rovio, the Finnish word for bonfire. This is not a story of instant success for the game company. Since their games were created before the invention of the smartphone, they endured brutal years at the company. They were too early in the mobile gaming industry. This resulted in the company making 51 games, which were complete flops. In 2009, the company was in a dire situation and was at risk of going bankrupt. They needed their 52nd game to do well, otherwise the company would go under. Their 52nd game was Angry Birds. Back in 2009, Rovio was strapped for cash and had only one shot to create a game. Their sole designer, Yako Ilsailo, was tasked with coming up with ideas. He's been doodling animals since he was a child. After sketching several birds with beaks, round bodies and angry brows, the designer had a brilliant idea. A flock of furious birds causing chaos. To everyone's surprise, the first concept of the game was vastly different from the final product that millions have come to know and love. At first, players were tasked with launching a queue of birds at simple structures with color codes. But the development team quickly realized the game was missing something crucial, enemies. With a tight schedule and limited resources, the designer created a pig-like creature. The reason why they chose pigs? Well, at the time, the swine flu epidemic was in the news, so it made perfect sense for the staff to select green pigs as the enemies. Even after creating a prototype, Rovio still hadn't implemented a catapult as a mechanic. Instead, the birds would merely jump towards the castles or other structures. During testing, they quickly realized the game was not intuitive and people had no clue what they were supposed to do. The game lacked affordances. After many prototypes, they picked a slingshot. Since smartphones were going mainstream, the touchscreen provided a unique input. This helped the launching mechanic as players would find the perfect trajectory and power. With a slingshot asset, the players knew exactly what it does just by looking at it. On the 10th of December 2009, Angry Birds was released and well, it didn't do well. It wasn't until six months later that it pushed up to the number one spot on the App Store. Most mobile games at this point became trends. They would jump to the top 100 for one to two weeks and then fall back down to obscurity as a new and better game was released. But not Angry Birds. Angry Birds stayed at number one for 275 days. This became Rovio's first and only profitable title. The entire world was addicted to Angry Birds. It was a cultural phenomenon. There wasn't a single person alive who didn't recognize the game. They knew they had more than just a game. This was the start of an empire, but they knew they had to get on this quick. So many other revenue sources opened up, from merchandise such as toys and clothing to movies. The game got so popular that an entire Angry Birds theme park opened in China. It took three years from 2009 to 2012 to hit 1 billion downloads which brought the company a tremendous $195 million in revenue. Just two years later in 2014, it hit 2 billion downloads. They changed the studio's name from Rovio to Rovio Entertainment. Rovio Entertainment better reflected its new direction because it was no longer just about making games. The company also started publishing games. Multiple smaller studios came rushing to use Rovio's IP to build more Angry Bird games in different variations. Their next games found success as they were true to the original. The games featured new creative and fun mechanics. The original Angry Birds was built around gravity, but Angry Birds Space added a fresh new twist to it by adding planet gravity fields. The franchise got so big that they even started a collaboration with LucasArts. This allowed them to bring another large audience, the fans of Star Wars. The iconic lightsaber, other weapons, characters and locations from the movies made an appearance in the games. Whilst everything looked like it was going well, cracks started to show. As the Rovio team were looking to milk Angry Birds for everything it has, they lost their way. 
the game's directions changed with every title, exploring different genres. It became how can we make the most money from this, rather than how can we make this game fun. The reason Angry Birds did so well in the first place was because of innovation. Innovation in using mobile technology, innovation in creating an engaging touchscreen mechanic, and innovation in character and level design. But after the Angry Birds' success, innovation stopped. It's clear that they focused more on quantity than quality. They released a new game called Amazing Alex, which flopped just like their first 51 games. Rovio continued to release more games with each being less original and less engaging. Then Angry Birds Transformers came out, which was a side-scroller with never-ending microtransactions. The microtransactions disappointed the fans. Same with the Angry Birds Fight, which resembled Candy Crush. Rovio stopped innovating and just started reskinning other games with the Angry Birds characters. Another example is Angry Birds Go, which featured similar gameplay to Mario Kart. They just wanted to milk the entire Angry Birds name for sales and merchandising. In 2014, Rovio had laid off 110 employees, which was 15% of their entire workforce. They proceeded with the layoffs, removing 38% of their workforce, which was a total of 260 people. That is a struggle that many game companies find themselves in. They milk their number one franchise for money, but because of that, fans become less and less engaged, draining their money to stay afloat. The company must fire staff, but firing staff makes it harder to build engaging games, so the cycle continues. If you pardon the pun, all their eggs were in one basket. Instead of using the time to start new ideas, Rovio continued to milk their franchise, with each new release doing worse than the previous. This made Angry Birds uncool and severely hurt their merchandise sales, which used to bring in 50% of the total revenue. Things were going in a downward spiral. Rovio continued on this path, hoping one day the Angry Birds name would be worshipped again. This failed. From 2014 to 2015, merch sales dropped by 43%, which was the reason behind the huge layoffs. In 2016, the Angry Birds movie came out. The movie did quite well, earning $353 million after having a $73 million budget. The movie wasn't that engaging, and people went to see it just because of the popularity the franchise had. The fact that the movie wasn't special hurt its sequel. In 2019, the second Angry Birds movie earned $152 million, which is less than half of what the first one made. To put the cherry on top, in 2019, Rovio also removed the first successful Angry Birds from app stores without any warning. The reason they did this was to push fans to their newer games, which were profit-making and filled with microtransactions. They had to release an apology for this. To make matters worse, Rovio collected data from its players, who are predominantly children. This data was then sold to other companies. When the public found out, Rovio was in serious trouble, as now they had to face a lawsuit due to them violating children's privacy. Companies are known to capitalize on their products, as seen in popular franchises, such as Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty, and yearly sports games. However, Rovio may have taken this to an extreme. According to reports, they have over 130 games, apps, projects, or experiments under the Angry Birds name. These include free and paid games, spin-offs, web apps, exclusive releases, films, shows, theme parks, and cancelled projects. Unfortunately, each subsequent release has been worse than the last. Rovio's story is an interesting one. On one hand, they're an inspiration. Despite all odds, they continued to push out game after game after game. 51 games in a row, all of which were complete failures. They certainly deserved the success they found just through sheer grit and determination alone. Angry Birds itself was a design masterpiece, and with how far Rovio was able to take it, just shows how much of a gold mine it truly was. But on the other hand, Rovio deserved its failure. After creating a masterpiece, they never expanded upon it. They of course added more Angry Birds, but nothing else. They did not innovate, and they did not create any new experiences. The global brands that Rovio wanted to align with itself are Disney, Marvel, and Nintendo, just to name a few. But all of these brands continue to expand, whereas Rovio continued to repeat. After Walt Disney announced Mickey Mouse to the world in 1928, Mickey was a massive success, and of course, more content involving him was released, but they didn't stop there. They also released more characters in supporting roles. But even then, those additional characters had their own separate and unique stories. It wasn't long until the Sensational Six was born, which included Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Donald Duck, Daisy Duck, Goofy, and Pluto. As a group, they're some of the most popular and beloved Disney characters in history. 
These characters have been used over and over again in various mediums, but each time they offer a different and unique experience. Now, Disney owns the rights to thousands of experiences, whereas Rovio still only has one. It appears that the worst thing you can do to kill your studio's future is to fail to be innovative. Games are such a popular market nowadays. Thousands of games are released on Steam every day. If you build a successful game, make sure its sequels stay true to it. Don't add unnecessary money-grabbing mechanics, or do the same thing over and over again. Innovate and develop new engaging experiences for your players. Otherwise, you'll kill your own company, just like Rovio. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy our next one. YouTube has selected it specifically for you. Enjoy!